watching The 7 from WATE 6 on your side. Good evening, I'm Lori Tucker in for Bo Williams and welcome to The 7. Let's get a look at the big seven stories right now. Topping the list, the heat. TVA officials report power demand hit 30,784 megawatts yesterday. That is the third highest peak ever recorded in June here. It also follows Monday's record-breaking power demand and marks the third straight 30,000 plus megawatt day. Now for the latest on the heat, let's go ahead and turn it over to meteorologist Victoria Cavalieri. We need some relief. I know we are going to see some finely Lori as we head towards the weekend, but we are still weather aware tonight as that heat advisory continues for another hour. Right now over Gatlinburg, some people out and about, but temp readings again this afternoon have been excessive. Right now we're sitting at 94 degrees in Maryville, 88 in Gatlinburg, 95 in Athens. Add in the humidity and it's still feeling like the mid to upper 90s for most locations. We've got a feels like temperature here in Knoxville of 97, feeling like 99 in Athens, and even feeling like 96 in Jamestown. That heat advisory does continue until 8 p.m. tonight. Then we'll drop weather aware status, but we're going to reissue it tomorrow due to the chance for showers and storms. I'm breaking down our possibility of some severe weather tomorrow coming up. All right, thank you, Victoria. Next on the Big 7, many of us are trying to beat the heat, stay cool, but in times of higher prices, people may be getting heated about that extra bump they'll see in their electric bill. The inflation is definitely not helping as folks are a little bit tighter with the budget. The dollar isn't going as far. This is affecting one of the most at-risk groups in our community, seniors. Many are taking advantage of the CAC's local free fan program to save money. But health experts will tell you air conditioning is the best option for people of all ages. Fans are not the um, blowing around hot air isn't going to cool you enough, and seniors seem um, have a harder time adjusting to the heat than uh, younger individuals. KUB recommends doing things like keeping your blinds closed, limiting stove or oven usage, and turning your thermostat up when you're not home. Those things may be helpful in having a more bearable utility bill. There's a lot more advice from both KUB and CAC to help stay cool without putting a dent in your bank account. You can find all of that on our website, WATE.com. Next on our Big 7 list, we're hearing from a woman recovering after having to fight off a bear on her own front porch. She's the woman we told you about last night, injured by a mother bear. TWRA had to euthanize the animal, the second bear, in less than a week. Alpha Williams says she has bears come onto her property all the time to eat from her apple tree. She says that's what she suspects these bears uh, before were doing, before they heard her come onto her front porch. Alpha says she was horrified when that bear with three cubs came right Right up to her. It was right in my face, and as I pulled this chair out, I guess it got me right here. But I pulled this chair out, and it, it was right, come right in my face, and it, so I just got pushing the chair like that, and and I thought for a minute it wasn't going to leave, but it finally did. She immediately called her neighbors and was taken to the hospital, had to get stitches. Bear sightings, of course, are not uncommon in this area, but according to neighbors, they're a lot more frequent right now. TWRA says the aggressive behavior could be up because of an uptick, uh, an uptick in people feeding the bears. They want to remind you not to leave dog or cat food outside and never intentionally feed the bears. Next on the Big 7, a Knoxville woman is dead after being caught in a rip current at a North Carolina beach. 67-year-old Tony Watts died Tuesday evening. That's according to a spokesperson for the city of Oak Island, North Carolina. The community's water rescue squad says Watts is the third person to drown in the last month because of rip currents. Also, the group is reporting that people on the beach put their own lives at risk by swimming out to bring Watts into shore, trying to save her life with CPR. Next on our list, a man accused of robbing a 92-year-old woman outside of her home is now in custody. Police captured Michael Bledsoe early this morning after getting a tip he was at a Casey store on Chapman Highway. Officers later found Bledsoe hiding in some nearby woods. Officials say he was found with a substance believed to be heroin. In addition to his outstanding warrants, Bledsoe now facing several other charges, including drug possession, resisting arrest, and evading arrest. This all stems from an incident earlier this week when Bledsoe allegedly followed that woman home from a Sam's Club on Knoxville Center Drive and snatched her purse while she was unlocking her door. 
Next on the 7, Knox County District Attorney General Sharm Allen is shedding light on the Knox County Regional Forensic Center's newly released drug-related death report for 2021. That report, as we have told you, shows the number of people who overdosed and died in Knox County increased 29% in 2021. Allen stated that report showed an unfortunate trend for Knox County that also saw a rise in overdose deaths in 2020 after they started to decrease before that. Allen says the lingering of effects of the pandemic and the impacts they have on mental health are a contributing factor to this increase. We do see more men than women, but not significantly. It's not just a male problem. We see drug overdose deaths across the board. It is not a male female problem. It is not uh, a black white problem. It is not a socioeconomic problem. It is across the board. Drug overdoses affect everyone. Uh, regardless of what category you put them in. But Allen also stresses the connection between fatal overdoses and mental health issues. She says if you or anyone you know is experiencing addiction or mental health struggles, it is so important to reach out for help before it's too late. Next on our list tonight, Tennessee state officials honored victims of violent crimes this morning with a ceremonial signing of the Truth in Sentencing Bill. The bill approved by the state House and Senate requires those convicted of violent crimes like murder or vehicular homicide to serve their full sentence without parole. Those convicted of lesser crimes would be required to serve at least 85 percent. The DA says this bill will make a huge difference for victims and their families, and they'll no longer have to guess a sentencing out date for people who uh, perpetrated heinous crimes against them. We're just very fortunate to have this legislation pass. Um, what it means is we can now sit down as prosecutors and actually look at a victim and give them an out date for the person who's committed a crime against them. Governor Bill Lee has not added his signature to the bill, and he says he doesn't plan to. The law will still go into effect since it passed in both chambers. Meanwhile, the heat is being blamed for more issues with those elevators at Summit Towers Apartments. We've been telling you about ongoing problems with these elevators this year. The Knoxville Fire Department says they stopped working yesterday morning after the motors overheated, impacting people who live at Summit Towers. For hours, KFD says an air conditioning unit was brought in as a temporary fix to cool those motors, uh, they're working right now.